Greetings and welcome to week four. My apologies for a couple of things. Darn it. Um, sorry, this lecture is a little bit late. I don't do these ahead of time. I do them uh, right before the class starts, just in case there's something I want to talk about in that particular class. So I had got a cold this weekend and I lost my voice, and it's difficult to lecture without a voice. So this is a couple days late. The other bigger apology, as I was looking through this week, unfortunately, and you know, you guys are the first people to take this class. You are the very, very first students to ever take this class. So there's a couple of kinks, a couple of bugs that uh, I'm more disappointed than you probably are. But uh, week four was going to be my favorite week. And I was looking at the syllabus and I was looking at the course content and they didn't match. I didn't make them the same. And so I've got to make a dash now between this week and next week, kind of combine the two because there's Definitely things I want to talk about and things I want to hit. I think it's very, very important. Uh, but between the syllabus and the course content, they didn't quite line up. So it'll be fun. You know, second school motto is we are nothing if not flexible. Uh, there'll be some things we'll do this week, some things we'll do next week. This week we're kind of talking about uh, the roles of police. I've added to the course content a newspaper article I wanted you to read. Uh, it's an article about the police academy down in Washington, and they're making this big change. According to the academy director, they're changing from training their officers to be warriors, to be guardians. So that has a lot to do with the role of police. You know, what are we teaching them to do? What do we ask them to do? <laughs> Excuse me. Cold's not totally gone yet. In Alaska, we've got a couple of different academy models. We've got the Trooper Academy, the Department of Public Safety runs here in Sitka. And in fact, we have a program here on campus here where you can put yourself through the academy. That's not true in a lot of states. Uh, in Washington, you get hired and then the department sends you to the academy. Uh, here, you can put yourself through if you would like. <laughs> Excuse me, I would edit these out if I can, but this particular program doesn't let me just edit things. Got to go straight through. In uh, California, you go to the local community college that runs a police academy, you go through there three months and walk out with a certificate. In Minnesota, you walk to your local community college and your two-year degree and your certificate are the exact same thing. You go to the police academy the exact same time you learn your, earn your associate's degree. So you put yourself through, you graduate, and then you walk up to the department and say, here's my license and you go to work. <laughs> Boy, excuse me, this is a bad one. In, uh, in Alaska, like I said, we've got the two academies. We've got the one here in Sitka. Military model. The troopers are big believers in stress management. Uh, they don't want you to get out on the street and get yelled at for the first time and fall apart. So they do a lot of stress things in their academy. It's, uh, like I said, a military model. With shaved heads and push-ups and saluting and sir yes sir and that type of thing. The other academy in the state is up at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. It's on the college campus. Uh, it's just like taking college classes in a classroom. You do the shooting and driving and defensive tactics and handcuffing that you would anywhere else, but everything else is more on a collegiate model. Much fewer shaved heads and push-ups. So look at the two models <laughs> I'm sorry. Look at the two models and see which one you think works best on fulfilling this role on what we think police officers are going to do. Paper this week, if you got a copy of this, if you got a copy of this manual that I suggested to begin with the directory, all of the, we're going to talk about private security. That's part of the role of police officers. Does Anchorage PD really have responsibility for guarding and protecting Diamond Mall. <laughs> Fine. Probably not. Um, however, they, they need some kind of security. Uh, you've got, what, 200 stores in there. Who knows how many employees. You have workplace violence. You have theft. You have loitering. You have all kinds of things. <coughs> and uh, 
Hope you guys feel really sorry for me. And uh, private security steps in to keep the mall a safe place. They do the same thing for hospitals and college campuses and ports and pipelines and all kinds of things. If you got this book, if you got this directory, uh, all of the big security companies are listed in it. If you head start, who's who's the players in the state and what do they do? If not, get out the old Google and start doing searches. Find out who guards the pipeline. Find out who guards the oil refinery in Valdez. Uh, let's talk about what the roles are there. <coughs> <coughs> I expect flowers. So, a little bit from this week, a little bit from next week. i got to combine the two. Uh, if some of you hadn't been so fast, here it is Tuesday, and a bunch of you have already taken the test and already got your papers in, so I couldn't change too much. And we'll combine this week with next week. So, good luck.